Item number, SCP-469. Object class, Keter. Special containment procedures. Subject is to be kept in an airtight soundproof containment chamber. 15.24 meters by 15.24 meters by 15.24 meters. Or 50 feet by 50 feet by 50 feet. Until a viable termination method is available. All personnel who enter SCP-469's chamber, Class D only, must wear standard soundproofing anti-resonance, SPAR suits, at all times while inside the chamber, and communicate only through written notes, hand gestures, or text messaging. Absolutely no one is to touch or even approach the subject with anything other than probing instruments. All equipment taken into SCP-469's containment chamber must make as little noise as possible, or none at all. Cell phones are permitted for communication between personnel as long as they are muted. Absolutely no bells are to be rung anywhere near SCP-469, no less than 15.24 meters, including alarms and recordings of bells. Description SCP-469 appears to be a gargantuan mound of large avian wings, with white, glossy feathers, curled into a massive ball, measuring 8.84 meters, or 29 feet in diameter, and weighing several tons. Each wing varies in size and span, ranging from a few centimeters to several meters, with the largest estimated to be at least 53 meters, or 173.8 feet in length, and branch off one another in seemingly random fractal-like arrays. X-rays have revealed the wings to possess long chains of small vertebra-like bones, as opposed to the few long bones in a typical avian wing, allowing each wing to have exceptional flexibility akin to a snake. These chains of bones can also lock together to form a more rigid structure to aid in flight or defense. At the center of the mass is a large humanoid creature, approximately 6 meters, or 19.6 feet, in height, curled up into a fetal position, to which all the wings are attached at its spine. Further details regarding this humanoid are unknown, as the density of both the wings and its body make it difficult to study remotely. SCP-469 appears to feed exclusively on sound waves using the energy gained from sound to grow newer and bigger wings and feathers, as well as repairing damaged ones. The louder the sound and or the higher the frequency, the faster SCP-469 grows. Though it can be sustained by any sound, it seems to have a preference for rhythmic or musical noises, especially those produced by bells. SCP-469 itself, however, seems to make no noise whatsoever due to the sound-absorbing structure of its plumage. Any human or animal that touches or gets too close to the surface of the creature will be quickly enveloped by the outstretching wings and drawn inside. Despite the feather's soft appearance, each barb has a sharp point that quickly pierces through clothing and into bare flesh, releasing a potent mix of stimulants that immediately activates the pain receptors in the victim's body, with additional stimulants keeping the victim from passing out too quickly. This is done to make the victim scream, loudly, thus feeding SCP-469 even more, until the victim either passes out or dies of blood loss and or suffocation from being buried beneath newly grown wings. SCP-469 is responsible for the loss of four personnel this way. Touching SCP-469 with dead or non-living objects does not have the same effect though it actively resists any attempt to physically penetrate its core body. All termination methods of SCP-469 have been unsuccessful. Flamethrowers were initially used, but the noise from the discharging propellant as well as the crackling flames gave SCP-469 the energy to grow faster than it could be destroyed. Cutting and slicing instruments, due to their close range, resulted in failure and the loss of two agents. Acid immersion is being suggested. Incident Log 469-1 On 2013, during an attempt to gather feather samples from SCP-469, researcher Waters' phone emitted the sound of a ringing bell. 
Researcher Waters later revealed that while she had set her phone on silent as per protocol, she had accidentally set her wake-up alarm for 7.30 p.m. instead of a.m. that day. This resulted in SCP-469 to immediately awaken, unfurling its numerous wings and standing at its full height, with many smaller wings completely enveloping its humanoid body in a manner similar to full plate armor. SCP-469's true face and skin were never observed, though security footage showed it to have what appeared to be a single bright yellow light emitting from its face. The entity then proceeded to escape from its cell by tearing open the ceiling and crawling up into the upper floor, repeating this action until it gained access to the roof outside. Security fired upon SCP-469 as it tunneled its way up through the facility, though small arms fire proved unsuccessful in slowing the entity down. It did result in large amounts of feathers to be shed, injuring several personnel who unwittingly touched them. The incident resulted in at least 23 injured personnel, with three in critical condition. No deaths recorded. Once on the rooftop, SCP-469 raised its arms over its head, leapt into the air, and began flying straight up into the sky, initially reaching speeds of over 1,200 miles per hour, the resulting shockwave causing further damage to the facility rooftop as its wings propelled it into the air. With each flap of its wings, SCP-469 ascended higher and faster, but also shed more and more feathers with each burst of speed. Observations revealed that at the third flap, SCP-469's ascension began to rapidly slow down due to the loss of its feathers. At the fifth flap, SCP-469 had lost approximately 50% of its feathers and proceeded to plummet back down to the ground, appearing to be desperately clawing up at the sky above while flapping its wings faster until finally crash landing in a nearby forest approximately 1.2 kilometers from where it started. SCP-469 was recovered without resistance and placed in a temporary holding cell until its original containment chamber could be repaired and reinforced. During this time, as well as approximately five months after being recontained, SCP-469 returned to its previous fetal position and showed no signs of aggression or sudden movements though researchers have claimed to have heard what sounded like muffled weeping coming from SCP-469. Lesson Complete If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-468, The Abacus, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.